Hi there and welcome to the Daily Arsenal News Show. Let's dive into today's top stories. David Seaman says £30 million pound Arsenal player simply has to start versus a Newcastle. Arsenal face a Newcastle this week and in a game that will have a huge ramifications at the top of the table. The Gunners are unbeaten in the Premier League so far, but after being hammered by West Ham in midweek, they are vulnerable heading into this one. To make matters worse, Mikel Arteta comes into this game with a few selection headaches to contend with. As ever, there is a debate around the goalkeeping situation, while his captain, Martin Odegaard, is also being questioned after being dropped from the team against Sheffield United last week. Speaking on the Seaman Says podcast, David Seaman has stated that Odegaard has to start against Newcastle, claiming that Arsenal can't afford to take any risk against a team as dangerous as the Magpies. Seaman gave his verdict on the £30 million midfielder against Newcastle. He said, No, not in this game. It's a massive game. Newcastle are up there, so you need to be in full swing. I don't think you go into this game resting anybody, even coming off the back of the League Cup. It's a huge game. It would be a huge shock if Mikel Arteta didn't pick Odegaard for this game. Okay, he didn't start last week, but that was against Sheffield United, the worst team in the Premier League so far. Newcastle are a different beast, and this is a game that Arsenal have to treat with the utmost seriousness. This is a match that Arsenal could easily lose if they don't get their team selection spot on, and it goes without saying that Odegaard is a key cog in Arsenal's strongest eleven. The Norwegian should certainly be back in the starting eleven for this match. David Seaman says he'd start 24-year-old up front for Arsenal versus Newcastle. Arsenal face Newcastle this weekend in what is a massive game in terms of the race for the top four and the title. The Gunners come into this one off the back of a 5-0 win against Sheffield United in the league, but a 3-1 loss to West Ham in the Carabao Cup in midweek has raised some questions about Mikel Arteta's team selection. Arteta has some key decisions to make in terms of who to pick to start this game, and one player who he has to make a big call on is Edin Kataya. The striker scored a hat-trick last week, but he wasn't at his best against West Ham, and with Gabriel Jesus edging closer to full fitness, his place in the team may be at risk. However, speaking on the Seaman Says podcast, David Seaman has made it clear that if it were up to him, Nketaya would be starting this week as the game against Newcastle. Seaman gave his verdict on the striker. He said, I would imagine he will go with Eddie because of the confidence that he has got. His goals were brilliant. His hatchery goal was a great finish. First time strike top corner. So if it was me, I'd probably go with Eddie. Jesus can then be there because Eddie can have a tendency to not be involved in the game too much. It would be utterly bizarre if Nketiah didn't start this game. We can't think of a single instance where a striker has been dropped after netting a hat-trick in a Premier League game and that shouldn't change here. Yes, he is not the best big game performer and he can be wasteful but he is in form and feeling good dropping him now would set his confidence back massively. Nketiah simply has to start here in our view. Paul Merson felt sorry for a 24-year-old Arsenal player in Carabao Cup loss. Arsenal legend Paul Merson has admitted he felt a bit sorry for Gunners attacker Kai Havertz earlier this week. The Arsenal summer signing is yet to really get going at the Emirates Stadium following his £65 million move from Chelsea on Wednesday night. Gunners boss Mikel Arteta played Havertz in midfield once again. The 24-year-old started on the left of the three-man setup with Jorginho in the middle and Fabio Vieira on the right. Havertz began brightly, looking hungry to make his mark, and went close with an early header which the opposition keeper saved. However, the German international faded as the game went on and looked anonymous in the second half as Arsenal fell to a 3-1 defeat. 
Merson, writing on a sport skida, seemed sad to see what's happening with Havertz, both in the game and just in a general at Arsenal. He said, Kai Havertz started in midfield alongside Jorginho and Fabio Vieira against West Ham, and I felt a bit sorry for him, as that's not his position, and he doesn't really have a fixed role in the team. It's such a shame to see Havertz struggling at present at Bayer Leverkusen, he looked like he could become a superstar. However, since coming to the Premier League, things just haven't worked out for him yet. Havertz is good at tackling aerial duels and making of the ball runs, so in theory, this should make him a decent option in midfield. However, he sometimes struggles on the ball. Admittedly, few Arsenal players emerged from the loss in East London with much credit, but Havertz hasn't put that many great displays in either. Let's hope things improve, and he gets there. Could Arteta consider playing him further up, maybe in attack? Let's see what happens in the coming weeks. William Saliba says physical Arsenal player is actually amazing on the ball. William Saliba has been full of praise for Declan Rice at Arsenal. Speaking on the Amazon Prime Sport TikTok channel, Saliba was tasked with comparing many of his Arsenal teammates to different cars, and he gave an interesting answer when he spoke about Rice. The defender stated that Rice reminds him of a Lamborghini Urus, which is a Range Rover Esqui Lamborghini, stating that his combination of physicality, speed and ability on the ball reminds him of the elegance of this car. The defender spoke highly of his Arsenal teammate. He said, Declan Rice, Declan Rice, a Lamborghini Euros, yeah, he is physical, fast, and he is really good with the ball as well. Saliba is absolutely right about Rice. He has the perfect combination of pace, strength, and class on the ball. Rice is a real jack of all trades in that regard. He can play easily as a destroyer, a driving force, or even a playmaker when needed. And while he does have areas where he needs to improve, his raw attributes are fantastic. William Saliba says £32 million Arsenal defender is so good in possession. Arsenal defender William Saliba has compared Alexander Zinchenko to a Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon. The Frenchman sat down for a quick segment with the Prime Video Sport, where he was asked to compare some of his Arsenal teammates to sports cars. Zinchenko got a good one. Arsenal signed Zinchenko from Manchester City last year in a deal worth £32 million. The Ukrainian had an instant impact at the Emirates, playing a key part in helping the Gunners become serious title contenders. Zinchenko's form hasn't been the greatest this season, but he still has the respect of every one of his teammates at Arsenal, including William Saliba. The Frenchman, after comparing Gabriel Martinelli to a fast Audi, was asked to pick a car for Zinchenko. He went with a classic choice for a classic player. He said, Zinchenko, what car I can give him? Class G, the G wagon, Mercedes, the big one. Because he is a class with the ball, so elegant as well, he is good. Arsenal are still unbeaten in the Premier League and are currently just two points behind league leaders Tottenham Hotspur in the table. However, it has to be said that the Gunners are still stuck in first gear. The fluidity in their attack is almost non-existent, they aren't able to create much centrally, and if their wide players are restricted, they look clueless. One player who always popped up in central areas to help Arsenal break through defenses last season was Zinchenko. The Ukrainian is brilliant in that role, but he hasn't been at his best so far this season. Zinchenko needs to step up now, if he doesn't, Takahiro Tomiyasu, who has been brilliant over the last few weeks, will take his place in the side. Arsenal have now been tracking outstanding £25 million England international for a long time. In the planning for the future, Arsenal have now been tracking AC Milan defender and England international Fikayo Tomori for some time. That's according to Tutto Mercato in Italy, who claim that Arsenal are now following the progress of Marguerite and Tomori. The former Chelsea duo are also being tracked by other Premier League clubs, which includes North London rivals Tottenham. 
Arsenal have long been linked with Gwahi, but Milan's Tomori is a name that hasn't been mentioned so often. Tomori left Chelsea in pursuit of regular game time in 2021, and he is certainly found it since he moved to Italy for £25 million. Interestingly, Milan are now being linked with a move for another English centre-back, Bournemouth defender Kelly, perhaps paving the way for Tomori to leave in the near future. Mikel Arteta does have strong options at the back, but Urian Tamber's injury has left Arsenal one short. Moreover, a signing like Tomori would massively raise the competition for William Saliba and Magalis if Arsenal's interest is to be believed. Surprisingly, William Saliba has actually come in for some criticism. Marcel Di Zaili admitted that he simply didn't consider the centre-back to be anything special. Incredibly surprising comments, given just how good the 22-year-old has been for Arteta. Nonetheless, Tomori would be a strong addition as mentioned, even if he is unlikely to displace a starter immediately. Arsenal's squad depth was laid pretty bare in the last match, not because of a lack of options, rather just a big drop off from quality of the first 11, and the outstanding levels Tomori has been showing for Milan would surely be a massive boost for this Arsenal team. Arteta's side now head to Newcastle United for a crucial tie tomorrow, a venue they did far well at last season, and after a very disappointing display, the Spaniard will be demanding a huge improvement. One player that surely will return to the fold is Tomiasso, rested in the last match. The fullback has now been adding much more defensive security to Arsenal's backline, even if Arteta has admitted that he still doesn't know the defender's best position. Danny Murphy says Tottenham won't sign £60 million player, Arsenal reportedly favourites to get him. It feels as though Ivan Toni is the name on everyone's lips heading into the January transfer window. The £60 million striker may not have played a single minute of Premier League football this season, but he remains arguably the most in-demand striker in the division. The likes of Chelsea and Arsenal have been strongly linked with Toni, with Arsenal named as favourites to sign him in the past, while Tottenham are, of course, still on the lookout for someone to replace Harry Kane. However, speaking on 5, Danny Murphy has stated that he doesn't think Tony will end up going to Tottenham. Murphy gave his verdict on the striker and his next destination. He said, For me, we need to go in for Ivan Tony. I am, week in, week out, praying that Nketiah keeps scoring because Arsenal will show their loyalty there and then it's between us and the Spurs to get him. I don't think Spurs will be in for him. Murphy sounds confident that Tony won't end up at Tottenham, but we wouldn't be so sure. Indeed, while Spurs historically find it difficult to compete with the likes of Arsenal and Chelsea over big-name signings, the tables could be slowly turning. Let's be real, Tottenham are one of the best teams in the Premier League right now only, and while Arsenal could make a strong argument for being a more alluring destination, Chelsea have no such footing at this moment in time. Indeed, the Blues are an absolute mess right now, and a player as ambitious as Tony would surely rather join Arsenal or Tottenham than a Chelsea in January. This is certainly a situation to keep an eye on as the three London giants potentially duke it out for the signing. Paul Merson says 15 million pound midfielder wanted by Arsenal can do it all. Speculation linking Arsenal with Douglas Louise has begun doing the rounds again ahead of the January transfer window. Just a few weeks ago, 90 Minutes reported that Gunners Dio Ed Gaspar and Mikel Arteta are huge admirers of the Aston Villa midfielder. Last summer saw Arsenal push for Louise. The Guardian reporting that the Gunners failed with a deadline day move for him last summer. And in the last transfer window, journalist Dina Jones told Give Me Sport that Arsenal still want Louise, saying it's an open secret. Paul Merson, speaking on Sports Skida, has praised Louise once again and said he understands why the Gunners had their eyes on him. He said, As I said last week, Douglas Louise is the most underrated midfielder in the Premier League currently. 
the lad can do it all and shows up every week. It's not hard to see why Arsenal wanted him earlier this year. Arsenal could certainly do with bolstering their midfield ranks further in the January transfer window. As good as Thomas Party is, his injury record remains concerning for a Gunners side seeking to push for honours. Meanwhile, summer signing Kai Havertz continues to struggle. He played in midfield against West Ham in midweek, but once again fluttered to the sieve. As for Louise, the 25-year-old has been excelling under Onai Envy recently. He has registered six goals from 15 Claret and blue appearances in all competitions this term. Louise would certainly fit the bill at Arsenal as a high-caliber player who is able to operate in various roles in midfield. However, after the £15 million man signed fresh terms with Villa just last year, the Gunners would have to pay a huge sum if they want to sign him, and signing a key player from any club, particularly a top-flight club playing in Europe, is very difficult mid-season. Such a move risk derailing the selling club season and would cause uproar among fans. As we wrap up today's Arsenal news, remember to stay tuned for daily updates right here on the channel. Don't miss out on the latest updates, so make sure to hit that subscribe button and give us a like if you found this information valuable. Your support means the world to us. Thanks for watching and until next time, take care.